Hello, I'm Richard Eimers, Associate Broker at Eimers Group, brokered by eXp Realty. Good morning. Today is April 12th, 2022, and this is April's monthly market report. And yes, we're already halfway through April. So let's look at everything relative to the spring real estate market. First, there is the esteemed Mike Simonson from Altos Research who said, we keep watching for it, but there are absolutely no signs of market slowdown anywhere in the data. If anything, we're seeing the market continue to heat up. There is no doubt that we're in a very busy market and we've been in one for the last couple of years, all through COVID and all through last year. And this year, many were saying, maybe the markets are starting to moderate, but we've continued to see a very busy market. The National Association of Realtors just came out with the most recent buyer and seller traffic maps. These maps show the areas with the highest and lowest concentration of active buyers and sellers in each of our state markets. The national buyer traffic map, with few exceptions, is strong with buyer traffic. And for the record, the rise in interest rates is not slowing down buyer traffic at all anywhere across the country. And there are just a few states with stable buyer traffic, but nowhere in the country is there weak buyer traffic. If we look at seller traffic, the seller traffic is very weak nationwide. As a matter of fact, in the middle of the country, just above Nebraska and Wyoming, it looks like there's nothing there to sell. And if you ask about the seller's traffic there, it is nothing to sell. Across the rest of the country, there are very few sellers. And so now what happens? Anytime we're in this type of market where we have strong buyer demand, the lack of sellers keep an upward pressure on prices. If there's any sort of good news relative to sellers and listings, it was in March. Active listings increased in this country for the first time in six months. If you go back to the fall of last year, around September, we started to see a drop in active listings and all those new listings were being immediately consumed by waiting buyers in the market. Today, we're starting to see an uptick. It may be very little, but nonetheless, it's an uptick in new listings. If you look at March locally, there were 1,204 active and 548 pending listings in the Destin to Miramar Beach to Inlet Beach real estate markets, according to the Emerald Coast Association of Realtors MLS data. If we go back to March of last year, there were about 1,304 active and 739 pending listings. That's 100 fewer active and 191 fewer pending listings in March 2022 compared to March of 2021. So, of course, we need more listings locally as well as across the country. Forecasters looking at the market are saying, we thought it was going to be this amount of activity, but see it being a little bit more. This was articulated by Fortune magazine, who said they now see more industry insiders throwing out their previous forecasts and replacing them with more bullish short term looks. Indeed, some experts say the 2022 spring housing market might go down as one of the most competitive on record. Let's review this again. Strong buyer demand, weak seller traffic, all of this leading to a very, very competitive market. If you look at what's been dominating new cycles today, it is the lack of pending home sales. The National Association of Realtors research team gives a good synopsis of pending home sales over the last several months. They say pending home sales have dropped and pending home sales are down, not because there's a lack of demand in the market. It's because we can't sell what we don't have. We simply cannot reach the market potential in real estate because we don't have the number of homes to be able to sell to the number of people that want 
to buy them. Again, all of that keeping upward pressure on prices. Locally, February this year had just 525 pending home sales compared to 665 pending sales in February of 2021. And that's at the bottom of a healthy market and down because of the lack of active listings, only because we don't have what we need. It's certainly not because there isn't demand in the market. According to showing time, showings actually exceeded the number of showings during the pandemic. Today, we're ahead in showings and activity. Those scheduling appointments to see homes are well ahead since before the pandemic and well ahead of showings during the pandemic. So the lack of existing home sales is not because there's no demand in the market. There's very much a strong demand in the market. It's because of the lack of available homes. All of this keeping an upward pressure on prices. This is the latest information from CoreLogic on price acceleration. As we came through last year, we saw prices seem to have peaked, if not, you know, maybe plateaued. And what we're seeing through November, December, and January numbers ratcheting up slightly in the amount of appreciation year over year. So a very, very competitive market. Craig Lazaro from the Case Schiller Report said, Last year, we observed that home prices, although continuing to rise quite sharply, began to decelerate. Even that modest deceleration was a pause in January. The 19.2% year-over-year change for January is the fourth highest reading in 35-year history. So CoreLogic report also showed 19.2% appreciation. We can just call that a lot of appreciation, well ahead of a historical appreciation. Today, we have more listings than active listings. Compared to the new listings going back to August 2021, and although the fall and through the fall and coming into the new year, active listings outpaced the new listings until March, where new listings actually outpaced the active listings. This shows a picture of what's happening in real estate today. As soon as something goes on the market, it sells. It sells right away. In March, we saw new listings outpacing the active listings in the market because the new construction single family housing units were being completed. And this is why it's so hard to find a home right now, why prices have risen the way they've risen. For 14 straight years, We've been below the 50-year average in new builds in this country, going all the way back to the 70s. And what I'm telling people is we're literally back in the 70s and 80s, when there were more new homes completed in this country than there have been in the last 14 years. This is all due to the fallout of the housing crisis in 2008. Builders were hit extremely hard and had to build back slowly their capacity and their ability to bring new bills to the market. There is no doubt that the lack of available new homes coming to market is a constricted supply. A lot of people want to buy, driving the price up, making it harder to find a home. The other issue that is of big concern for a lot of consumers in this spring is inflation. Homeownership has historically been a hedge against inflation. When you're in an inflationary economy, you want to be invested in hard assets that outperform inflation. For decades, home price appreciation has outperformed inflation. In the appreciation versus inflation might have been neck and neck in the 80s with a little higher inflation in the 2000s due to something going on in the 2000s with the housing crisis. But for many decades, housing has outperformed inflation. This is something to keep in mind as folks are concerned about inflation.
Today, many people are asking themselves, should I buy right now? Is this the top of the market? In a home price expectation survey, a survey of 100 economists, real estate professionals, market investor professionals were asked what's going to happen with home prices between today and 2027. What they considered was the potential growth in household wealth over the next five years based solely on increased home equity. If you purchased an average priced home at $360,000 in January of this year, the results of the survey said you would stand to gain over $96,000 in home equity. That's real money and price appreciation in the coming years. There are a lot of people today concerned about prices, but certainly the experts are forecasting home price growth well into the next five years. A lot of folks are waiting on the sidelines right now. For home prices to go down, the experts' opinion on average home price appreciation will be approximately 6.7% per year. There is nobody right now forecasting prices to go down. On one side, Zellman saying 3% per year and CoreLogic saying 9.6% and anything in between. There is no doubt this competitive spring market will see home price appreciation. I think they'll raise this appreciation number as we go through the year end appreciation in homes this year is expected to be well above what we've seen in historic years. I am Richard Imer signing off. Make it a great day.